Okay, this is a, a section of spinal cord. First of all, you can see coming in the back portion here is a sensory neuron. It's unipolar. Its cell bodies are collected together in what we call the dorsal root ganglion. Okay. Coming out the front is the motor neuron. These are rootlets that make up the root. This would be motor exclusively. This would be sensory exclusively. But they join together for a short while to form the spinal nerve. Spinal nerves then are always going to be mixed. Branching off the spinal nerve are the rami. Dorsal ramus going to the deep muscles of the back and the, and the, and the skin. Ventral ramus basically serving almost everything else. The meningeal branch isn't shown here, but it would turn around, go back in, and feed the structures within the vertebrae. Then these are part of the autonomic nervous system. Specifically, this is part of the sympathetic division. The white ramus communicantes and the gray ramus communicantes. Uh, now, as far uh, as damage here, if we have information coming in here, if it's on touch and let's say conscious proprioception, that's part of what we call the posterior column, also known as the pos uh, posterior funiculus, medial lenisical pathway. The first neuron comes in and goes up the posterior column. In the medulla oblongata, it's synapses. The second neuron crosses and goes up the medial lenisculus pathway to the thalamus. The third neuron goes from the thalamus to the postventral gyrus area. And that's where we consciously I feel for fine touch, conscious proprioception, things like that. Now another important pathway bringing sensory information in is the spinal thalamic tracts. They come in, synapse immediately, second neuron crosses the other side. Remember it's always the second neuron that crosses the other side. Second neuron either goes up anteriorly or laterally. The lateral spinal thalamic carry information about pain and temperature the anterior itch, tickle, things like that. So always it's a second neuron in these three neuron pathways where we have the synapse first and then cross to the other side. Spinal thalamic tells you the pathway of the second neuron from the spinal cord to the thalamus. No mention of medulla. So nothing happens in the medulla, it just passes through the medulla on the way to the thalamus. Thalamus again to postcentral gyrus, the somatosensory area. So if we were to damage the spinal cord all the way across, a total transection, you'd lose sensory and motor below that cut. First of all, you'd lose uh, reflexes for a short time, then they would come back, but you'd still have your reflexes. That, that would cause, below that area, spastic paralysis, because you don't have voluntary control, but you still have reflexes. If you cut halfway across, though, well, this the posterior funiculus medial and meniscus pathway, it hasn't crossed yet. So if you cut on this side, you do this from the same side, and the area is served by the spinal nerve. You would lose pain and temperature, for example, and other spinal thalamic things from the opposite side, because that has crossed immediately. Now coming down, the uh, corticospinal tracts, the corticospinal means it's coming from the cortex, precentral gyrus, first neuron, the parietal cells we looked at under the microscope, it comes down, there's a little interneuron, but we're not going to worry about it, synapses with the lower motor neuron, that's the one coming out here. If you damage an upper motor neuron, you're going to have spastic paralysis, because you still have a reflex, but you have no voluntary control. If you damage a lower motor neuron, that's part of both pathways, voluntary and reflex pathways, you get nothing going to the muscle, you get flaccid paralysis. Now most of the corticospinal tracts, the parietal tracts, cross in the medulla oblongata, in the decussation of the pyramids. So if we damage the cord below that, halfway across, most of the uh, tracts have crossed already, so you lose from the same side. And that's the lateral corticospinal tracts, lateral going to the limbs. Most of the control is over the limbs. The anterior don't cross until the last minute, and therefore you damage those on the opposite side of the body. Okay. Now, so remember, this is always sensory, this is always motor, these are always mixed, the rami are always mixed also. Okay. So if we damage upper motor neuron, we get flaccid paralysis, we damage the lower motor neuron, we get 
uh, spastic paralysis. Now in some parts of the cord we also have lateral horns. That would be for the sympathetic neurons primarily in the thoracolumbar area, thorax, thoracic region, and upper lumbar region. So that's where you see lateral horns here. They come out the same pathway as the motor neuron. Polio can damage the lower motor neuron by uh, attacking this anterior gray horn. Now you can tell this is anterior because we have a larger anterior median fissure. Back here it's the posterior median sulcus, not as deep. Also you see lots of cell bodies here in the anterior gray horn. So that and the posterior, uh, the um, dorsal root um, ganglion. ganglion also gives you an idea that this is dorsal. Okay.